Hello everyone, it is the um, 24th of March, 2024, late in the morning, around 11 o'clock, approaching 11 o'clock. See what I can get done today. It's a, a cool day, breezy, a little chilly, um, but good enough to work. I have uh, mostly smaller things to do today. We'll see how far I get. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is um, replace that vent window electric switch on the right front passenger door. I can get the core sent out to Felix IV. Uh, while I have the door panel off, well, I'm going to take the door panel off too. I'm going to try and adjust the door to fit a little bit better. It's it's pretty good, but I noticed um, when I was driving it the other day, I had quite a bit of wind noise coming in through there. I know I could just adjust the top part, but also the space between the back and the front door is really tight. I couldn't even get those those little chrome stainless steel strips that go there for decor decoration i couldn't fit them in there wasn't enough room so that tells me the door is sitting a little bit too far back from where it should be so i'm going to see if i can uh, adjust that a little bit it's only got to move about a 32nd maybe a 16th of an inch somewhere in there finally uh, second attempt amazon finally got me the um, stethoscope here the engine stethoscope so that'll be a tool that i'm going to use when i have the engine running again to uh nail down exactly which lifter is making the noise so I can focus on replacing that. I also bought a, um, a gallon of uh, ADW90 gear lubricant. What I'm going to do with that is uh, I won't use it all, but I'll use most of it in the, uh, the rear end. The car is uh, 57 years old and it has less than 100,000 miles according to the odometer on it. So I doubt that the gear oil has ever been swapped out on the rear axle. Don't know even how much is in there. I never did get around to checking the level, but I'm going to, uh, to do that today. And uh, uh, I, have a, I have a pump that will fit in there, hopefully. Anyway, to uh, uh, install it, evacuate the old stuff, put it in the new. Then I've got some other smaller things. I uh, also bought some uh, rubbing compound. Just used this over the years a lot just to, just to see what it might do with the paint that's on the car. That's not the original paint, but maybe that'll uh, bring out the uh, shine a little bit since I'll be stuck with this paint job for a while. See how that does. Uh, that's all I can think of at the moment. I anticipate the arrival of that, that collar for the uh, upper bearing on the steering column to show up tomorrow. might be late in the day, though, so hopefully I'll have time when it gets here to actually install that. Then I'll be able to drive the car down the street. Oh, yeah, the other thing I want, I'm planning on doing today is... Uh, installing the rear shocks. I'm hoping that I can squeeze the, uh, the car ramps. It looks like there's plenty of room. I'll just put them directly under the wheels and just put it in reverse, even without a steering wheel, and I should be able to get it up on the ramps. That's, uh, I feel safer being under the car sitting on ramps than I do on jack stands, and it should give me plenty of height to work with under there. I'll need to do that too to swap out the, the gear oil. So that's the start of my day. Somehow I managed once again to not have audio with one of these video clips. So let me narrate here. I was uh, focusing on that uh, vent window switch from the master panel. That was from John Brewer. A beautiful switch, brand new. But it has uh, it's constructed slightly differently than the original, and it's causing problems. Um, you can see that uh, that metal strip on the back there, as I zoomed in a little bit, that doesn't exist on the original design. And what's happening is that it's preventing the window switch on the driver on the passenger's door to operate to open the vent window. It'll close, but it won't open. If I unplug that switch, then the switch on the right works like it's supposed to. And the same thing with the uh, the master switch you see there, which that needs to be rebuilt. Um, those new switches don't work with that master switch. But the original design switches work fine. So something about that metal strip on the bottom there, I think, is causing the problems. I was almost tempted to just cut one myself and see if that fixed it. But I'm going to let Felix Lafour handle this for me. Uh, next time I get a chance to talk to him, I'm going to send him the core that I owe him. And I'm going to ask him to clean that switch up, the master switch, because the contacts are dirty and it's intermittent. And then I'll ask him if he can repair the John Brewer switch you know, so it works properly. And uh, we'll see how all that goes.
So there you see the rear of the car up on the ramps now. It looks uh, pretty meek and mild right now, but there was some excitement getting the car at this point and not in a good way. I originally had my uh, orange metal ramps behind the wheels. And I got in the car, while well, it was already warmed up, I let it warm up, put it in reverse, and my gas pedal stuck. So I overran those ramps, and they were left sitting on top of the, underneath the car, and I'm hoping I didn't do any damage to anything under there. I'm going to find out in a minute. So my neighbor happened to be outside, so I asked him to give me eyes so I wouldn't overrun these ramps too. And uh, the pedal stuck again. I don't know if it's because I've got the dash panel hanging down there, but it didn't feel like it. It felt like it was something under the hood, so I'll have to... Uh, Keep an eye on that. So anyway, I'm about to crawl under the car now and um, work on the shocks in the back. Fortunately, the shocks are coming out pretty easily, not really having any problems. Just a matter of getting in there with long extension bars and universal joints and stuff. It always amazes me how much beefier the older shocks looked than the newer ones. I mean, they'll fit, and my options were limited. I just always it was the same on the front shocks too, and that's. It's always been that way. Years ago, I remember seeing the same thing. The older shocks always seem to be bigger and beefier, but I'm ah, not worried about it. As long as it fits, so far so good. I wanted to illustrate how uh, worn out these rear shocks were. They basically aren't doing anything. They're not pushing themselves out at all. I mean, I can push it all the way down, and it doesn't spring back out. So these shocks were definitely shot. So having a little bit of trouble getting the, uh, the nut off the end here, but I may use try an impact gun, see if that will spin it off. Probably the best thing to do. But moving along. I think this probably explains why I got the old shocks off very easily because they, they weren't springing out. They weren't biting me at all. These new ones are uh, fully charged and fully extended now that I cut the, um, the wire that was holding it together. So I've got it mounted on the... Uh, upper mounting flange. I don't know what else to call that. So that's ready to go back in the car. Then I'll probably have to figure out a way to compress this or lift the car up higher, do something to get the lower part mounted. But coming right along. All right, you're under the car with me now. I just wanted to illustrate my, my new shocks to show them in place. That actually went uh, very smoothly. I was uh, pleased. I expected uh, it to be more difficult. The hardest part was just getting the car up on the ramps without driving over the top of them a second time. I happened to notice while I was under here that this little clamp, I never did install it to hold that new brake line in place. And I think I did that intentionally because I didn't want to bend it any more than I already had to to get it to work. So I'm just kind of ignoring that. Now the next thing I'm going to do under here is right here is the, uh, the fill plug for the differential. So I'm going to get a tool to uh, unscrew that and drain that and put in some new. Well, I'm not having a lot of luck trying to get uh, oil out of that differential. I did finally get the plug off, and there's definitely oil in there. No question about that, so I guess that's a good thing. Um, but I can't get the, uh, even a smaller hose, I can't get to go in there because uh, it hits the gears right away, and I can't get in there to uh, evacuate it out. So I don't know if I can maybe find some kind of a fitting the same size as this that I can put in the hole that uh, you know had a, had a uh, connection to it that I could use a pump then. I, don't, I have no idea if that would work. I really don't want to uh, separate the, uh, the differential from the housing uh, just, just to uh, drain the oil. So. So for now, I think I'm just going to take the measurement here and see if I can even get a fitting that might work. I have no idea if that's even possible. So I did a little research online, and it um, looks like most people actually drill the hole in the case and made their own drain plug. I'm not comfortable doing that at all. So I think I'm just going to put my fill plug back in. At least I learned that there is uh, oil in there that much, so I feel better about that. Um, I'm going to ask my mechanic if he has any ideas. There's got to be a way to do it without taking that differential apart. Or take, you know, That just seems ridiculous to have to tear it apart just to drain the oil out of it. It just occurred to me that there might be an easier way to do it. It may not be that easy, but I could literally pull the axle shaft out of one of the uh, sides of the differential and then snake a long hose all the way down there and possibly pull it out that way, but that seems 
excessive, but plausible anyway. One other small to-do item I had on my list for today was to test the uh, cruise control vacuum bellows to see if it's still intact and holds vacuum. So I put my little vacuum pump on it. Let's see what happens when we pump it. Look at that. That thing is still working. This car is 57 years old and that rubber bellows still works. Wow. I'm amazed. Okay. So, although I see it uh, letting go too. I don't think it's supposed to... Uh, I don't really know how that thing works, if it's supposed to give at all or not, or if it's supposed to hold on to the vacuum you put on there. It is slowly draining out. Hmm. Interesting. I may have to consider replacing that if I want a reliable cruise control. I just tried a little experiment with my rubbing compound. It actually brought a little bit of life to that paint. So what I'll probably end up doing when I have some time is uh, just go over the whole car with it. Just to make it look a little more presentable since like i said i'm going to be stuck with this paint job for a while so i might as well get it as nice looking as i can so that was just a little experiment uh, i'm going to wrap it up for the day uh, the main thing i did today of course was replacing the rear shocks and i was surprised at how worn out the old shocks were both front and rear so they definitely needed to be replaced i'm happy that i got that done did not succeed in draining the oil out of the differential i'll just Save that for a future project. I'm not sure how to go about that right now. Not too worried about it. I replaced the uh, the vent window switch on the passenger door. So it's uh, Felix the Four rebuilt and it works fine. Um, what else did I do today? Tested the cruise control bellows. And uh, I think that was really about it. So tomorrow, what I may do, since I don't really have any big projects going right now, I could either play with that noisy valve lifter or I could replace this door. I have a replacement door for this and I think that's probably what I'm going to do. It's not that hard to do and that will give me one more piece of metal that I can add to my scrap pile because I need to haul that away soon. So that's probably what I'll do tomorrow. I'll decide tomorrow though for sure. Have a good evening.